Uh, a very warm welcome to everyone here and uh, all the panelists who have uh, uh, like uh, accepted our invitation to join here with a large number of audience, close to 570 uh, people have already logged in to hear this particular important uh, topic of significance in the uh, uh, crisis where we are, we have to talk about like where the sector is right now, what are the uh, uh, critical areas where we need to focus our attention and to develop a roadmap for future because uh, this is the sector which I, uh, during the discussion it came for, forward that this is the sector which is being hit first and it will be the last sector to revive to get the revival on the road. So keeping that view in mind uh, we thought to go ahead with particular this particular webinar and uh, there are some key pointers where we need a very specific discussion is on how large is the impact of COVID, what about the effect on the employability, and uh, how much time it will take to revive, what about MSME, what we expect from the government, because a lot of concerns are there on ACIS and other related schemes. So with this word, like uh, I welcome again to everyone, chairman and all the panelists, and uh, we look forward to a very insightful discussion and along the way, we can take the questions also. So uh, over to our chairman, Mr. Manita. Thank you very much. Thank you to all the panelists for agreeing to uh, be a part of this webinar and all those who also who are attending. Uh, we are, of course, faced with a crisis of a proportion which is absolutely something which nobody ever contemplated. And as uh, our DDG, Dr. Sinha said in his opening remarks that the one sector which is going to be hit, already hit very badly and will take time to revive will be the travel and tourism sector. As most of you are from that sector, I need not go over all the figures and the facts as they are, but let me lay out the issue as I see it. Uh, while the government of India, under the prime ministership of uh, uh, Mr. Modi, has done all that it can and done an absolute sterling job in terms of restricting the spread of COVID. So from a medical perspective, from a health perspective, they have done whatever it is that, they sh that should be done. But I think that the economic cost of this lockdown uh, and the uncertainty which it has created is something which has not been really looked at and has not been considered. Um, I don't think at the moment the way things are that the government is going to come out with any sector specific reliefs over a period of time that even if they do come out with another package it will largely be addressed to the MSME uh, uh, part of the industry, part of the economy, and there may not be anything specific for any sector, including travel tourism and including aviation, which is so closely linked to travel and tourism. Now, uh, you may not be aware of what SCPC is and what SCPC does, some of you. Uh, obviously, most of you are our members. But in the last uh, two months or so since the, uh, and even before that, uh, he has moved in uh, various uh, uh, directions. One direction, of course, is to ensure that the FCI scheme continues. We have also asked the government that uh, it be enhanced, but I don't think that is going to come through. But at least, uh, where there was noise that they would do away with SEIS for the coming year or for, you know, 2019-20. That has been taken care of. We are awaiting from uh, Department of Revenue Clearance and from the DGFT a policy on SEIS, which should come through. So we have had substantial discussions on that. We have also had a survey done of the benefits of SEIS to the industry the survey also which will be submitted to the ministry within the week, if not the next few days. 
to see that the and this survey was commissioned a little before the lockdown to see that uh, SEIS does continue. Uh, there is a larger issue which also services export SEPC is addressing and that issue is this that the services industry is not looked at on par with manufacturing and that is a major challenge which we all do face and one which we need to address. So we have tried to impress upon the ministry, the minister that services are a very, very important part of the economy. They, they are the bulwark of the economy. And while manufacturing does have its, uh, uh, obviously needs also to be supported, uh, so do services. And services do play a very major role, not only in terms of exports, but also in terms of the internal uh, growth of the economy. So that is something which we are trying to impress upon the uh, about the government. Um, having said that, I can see, and it doesn't need uh, any economist to, to just sort of foresee the issues which the travel and tourism industry, the hospitality industry, and this, in this we also include food and beverage, we also include the, uh, the restaurant industry the problem that it will face because it will be the last one to open and uh, the unemployment in this sector uh, is going to be is going to be substantial i was just reading that our unemployment statistics have unemployment has now gone up to 26% in the economy and even once the lockdown is removed the situation is not going to normalize and one sees that at least the whole travel and tourism uh, industry may not recover till the first quarter of next year. I don't want to come in the way of the other speaker. I think I have said enough. Uh, I would like uh, Abay to sort of take over and moderate the discussion. I'll be there throughout the discussion. But uh, I would request Abay to take it over. And once again, uh, I hope and wish that uh, all the panelists and all the persons who have logged into the webinar, they and their families are healthy and safe and continue to remain so. And all the way best. And the last is an assurance from the SEPC. Tourism and travel constitute the largest chunk of our membership. And we will continue to do whatever it is that we can for the industry. In our uh, suggestions to the government, we have asked for a specific package for the travel and tourism uh, industry. Further, uh, you may not be aware, but we have uh, uh, contributed a crore of rupees to the PM Cares Fund. But more than that, we have also taken a decision to put aside five crores of rupees for the coming year to work on promotion of various sectors and travel and tourism will be a very important part of that. So any initiative which is being taken by the industry to promote uh, the industry on international platforms and all, please count on the support, on the active support of SEPC, uh, not just in terms of its influence, but also in terms of actual financing of any uh, seminars or uh, exhibitions or virtual exhibitions which we are planning, uh, which we are also planning along with the Commerce Ministry. So anything which is required of the SEPC, you may reach out directly to me or to our uh, uh, DDG on this. And with that, I hand over the proceedings back to Kapesina. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for the context. And in fact, uh, uh, as mentioned, like uh, this is a sector which actually like employs a large number of uh, people. And uh, there has been concerns on ACIS, which sir has uh, given a kind of uh, feedback on the uh, developments that has happened across. But coming back to the point, like uh, in order to take this discussion forward, we have named this uh, session as rebooting and reinventing. So all over the world, like, you know, we, everything has been stopped right now as far as this travel 
and tourism sector is concerned. So there will be like everybody will be going in for rebooting depending on the emerging scenario and reinventing because there are certain things which will take a longer duration of time. So based on that, uh, like uh, we look forward to hear the views and to start with like our request, uh, uh, Mr. Beige Barua, uh, who needs no introduction and uh, has been like our secretary, uh, Minister of Tourism, vast experience. And uh, I would uh, invite him to take the discussion forward and uh, look forward to hear. Please, sir. Thank you, Abhay and Mr. Dawar and all the panelists. I'm really delighted to be uh, part of this discussion, though I'm not very happy about the whole situation. We are in an unprecedented situation. We are in a very grim situation. And this is a time when we should all put our heads together and to plan how to get out of the problems we have. Uh, the encouraging part of this uh, present scenario now is that I just found that the Ministry of Tourism has set up a task force to think about the revival. I think that's a very welcome sign. But uh, I would like to say that uh, this task force cannot be like uh, business as usual earlier. It has to be very urgent uh, business. Secondly, it is to be a public-private partnership of the real public-private partnership, where the ministry should be the mouthpiece of the government industry and the ministry should be the leader of what the in industry is trying to achieve. Uh, now, let me say that we are in a very uncertain situation. In that situation, we really don't know how things are going to happen in the future. That will depend a lot on factors which are outside the tourism and travel industry. But having said that, as everyone has been talking about, uh, it is quite clear that we will not be able to start too soon uh, the revival and also the come back to the normal situation will take a long time. Let us say that uh, by the time when you come back to the normal, the world would have changed unimaginable. It should change like uh, the doing of uh, the way of doing business will change perhaps, the innovations, IT, and on top of that will be the health security, which will be the most important part that will be driving uh, the tourism and travel industry because the public confidence in the safety measures of the health and security would be the prime consideration for start of the industry. Now, we'll not be having anything like called the new normal. Uh, so I would like to say, talking, taking from Mr. Avais, that rebooting and this thing is fine, but I will take it a little step further that today it is a problem of not only rebooting, but also a problem of survival for a very large number of the industry. I found that the IATO has said that 90% of the travel and tourism industry is, is, is small and medium enterprises. We are not talking about the huge number of sectors which are affected by tourism and travel, which is the ripple effects of travel and tourism going down the line. All those people are extremely badly affected because there is no travel and tourism now and not likely to be soon. So it's a question of survival. And then once we have the survival packages right and we can survive, we are on the brink of uh, uh, the situation and we figure so, so this large part of that can survive, then we have the recovery to the pre-COVID situation and then we have to take off, take off to a new future. So that's how I see. Now in that situation, we are talking about the total impact. I would suggest that uh, the, you have pointed out the statistics. The statistics are well known. I will not repeat them, but the point is, the government as a whole may not know the total impact of tourism. No, they may know only the arrival and departure figures. So it is, it is good to keep on repeating the impact of tourism and impact of tourism will really be seen only when it is not there. Now people will know what is the impact of tourism. As we used to say, tourism touches everyone. Now the first task I think I, I, to my mind is that uh, we need to have a quick assessment of what exactly has been the problem how it has affected the industry, small and medium industries, what they need to come back, and that a status report <clears throat> is an important part. Now, if you go for a status report to be prepared by the agency, it's taking a long time, that's not the, what I have in mind. We have the state governments. Every state has its specific problems for the industry, specific, specific plans. I suggest that the states should be asked to come out with a status paper on the industry situation in every state. So if it is decentralized, very quickly you can collect the figures. Now once we have the figures, it will be essential 
to prepare a master plan for the industry as a whole. And that should be <coughs> ministry's, ministry's plan. And that plan must go into the to economic recovery plan that we are thinking of for the industry, uh, for the whole economy as a whole. Because quite often, <coughs> tourism plans remain sidelined because it is not seen. So I think that this is the first uh, part. And here, for survival, we'll perhaps need to think about, many other countries are thinking about uh, uh, the payroll supports and other things, but only once we know what the problem is, we'll be able to know what exactly is needed. Now for recovery, I would say the list will be very long. I know the list that the industry will ask for would be terribly long, but uh, some of the things come immediately to mind that once we start to start the industry again, back on what it was earlier, you will need uh, liquidity, uh, you need working capital, you will need guarantee for getting that uh, liquidity. And then, then we have been talking about that these things would be much easier if the benefits of industry, like the manufacturing and all, is applicable to the tourism sector as well. There may be some problems, but that will make getting credit easier. So that is one area where we have to think. I have seen the industry has been talking about the GST rationalization, and that needs to be looked into, not because uh, uh, it is uh, felt that uh, there is a possibility of rationalization which can actually create demand and induce demand and it can help the industry to come back. Yes, government will have a serious problem in the time of falling revenue to consider any further relaxation, but we have to have a look with an open mind at what can be done and, and that is one area. And we have to review all the taxes and regulations that are in force in a normal time how some of them are relevant or not, whether they are not relevant, how to get rid of them so that industry ease of doing business is much better than uh, it was earlier because we are fighting against it. It are back to the wall in that situation. All the impediments have to be removed, whatever is seen to be achieved or whatever it is. Going forward, everything will depend perhaps which have, uh, on the health sector, as I said, at the second turn, we'll have to have a new look at the aviation ministry, aviation sector. Because the aviation sector is going to drive both domestic as well as in terms of tourism. And in that situation, uh, the civil aviation, uh, aviation fuel cost, uh, likelihood of it's being reduced because of the falling prices, etc., cetera, uh, is something which has to be planned very properly. We have to look at the, the ground handling cost the possibility of economy and efficiency in the aviation sector so that the cost comes down and the travel is much easier and the induced. Those are the factors which need to be looked into. And then we have to talk about responsible tourism because future is going to be responsible tourism in the sense that cleanliness that we talked about in our tourism policy in 2002 we health sensitivity and all those factors will continue to be important in the public mind and they will need to be looked into. Now I think uh, I will not take much time because I will give the broad framework only I try to give and the uh, nitty gritty and the details are the very, very industry stalwarts are here perhaps they will give and later on I will come back. But uh, I would like to say that the national tourism recovery plan must be prepared immediately by the task force and that should take into account all the concerns of the industry. And when I mean industry, it is not only the travel, not only tourism, not only restaurants, it is a complete travel and tourism economy which encompasses the small players all around the country. Then it should be made a part of the national economic revival plan. And thirdly, as the economic revival plan envisages that there will be a lot of infrastructure development in uh, you know, investment all around the country just to boost income and employment. And like we are talking about Amenrega. So what we should try to see is that the government's attention should be diverted that uh, much, much of that investment for infrastructure development should be diverted towards the uh, destinations, development of destinations, tourism destinations, so that domestic tourism can come up in a big way. And uh, we will, of course, have to, whatever we do, we will have to stagger our time frame in the sense that we cannot ask for everything at the same time. We will must have an immediate plan for survival. Secondly, we must have a short-term plan which will have incentives, which will have support from the government, 
and which will have uh, industry and government coming together. And third, we will have the long-term plan for going to the future once everything is all right. And that plan should have IT components, skilling, and uh, new destinations, uh, new de forming, etc. all those things. And that, I think, is a broad framework that she was in mind. We can talk about the integrities around this framework, anything else, and I'll be here to listen to and also add whatever I have from my experience and understanding. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for such an insightful detail. And uh, we believe, like, we all share the common view that the task force uh, uh, should certainly look into all these aspects. And uh, the last point which you mentioned about the national uh, tourism policy to be integrated with the national economic policy uh, in view of, uh, you know, seeking out a roadmap for revival. But right now, as mentioned, survival is the key. Like how the entire industry is going to survive. And a lot many, like, uh, it's somewhat disorganized also. Like a lot many people are in the organized part. So that has also become an issue. Now, when we look from the SCPC perspective, of course, the focus when we talk about tourism, it's more on the foreign travel happening to, uh, you know, travelers coming to India. So that is one segment. But what I also understand and we also share that unless your uh, domestic, uh, like uh, the hotel industry or the aviation, if they don't survive, it's very difficult to revive the, uh, you know, foreign travel coming to India. And one very important aspect Swachh Bharat's mission is already there. And uh, Sir has rightly pointed out that more concern will be on the cleanliness and you know, safe tourism kind of thing. So that is uh, a very, like, a very good pointers for that. Uh, so uh, just one question which we can uh, discuss later. Uh, like uh, there are countries like Germany, Spain, uh, Spain uh, uh, to take an example, even Sri Lanka, there are many countries which actually uh, were relying uh, you know, more on tourism, uh, Spain, lots of tourists goes from all parts of the world, nearby Sri Lanka. They all have come out with certain revival plan. So I feel like uh, there could be some learnings from their model also, and whether we can integrate with our model, you know, the best practices or whatever. So during the course of discussions, sir, like maybe we can take it further. But I will mention that one because UNWTO yeah. has come out with some plans, but I'm glad I, I forgot to mention not emphasize, is that our revival plan must start on domestic tourism. Let us forget about uh, international mm. tourism for at least a little while time. Mm. Uh, hopefully it will come. And domestic tourism and regional tourism. Uh, whenever we have problems of SARS, of financial crisis, etc., it was domestic tourism and regional tourism which sustained the industry. So you're very right. I, I, I'll mention about uh, the, the international outlook. Um, yes, sir. Hmm. Yeah, in fact, uh, like I was uh, 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 talking, uh, like uh, Sri Lanka, they are coming with a campaign called Tourism Tomorrow. Like, you know, after, so that, that kind of campaign, maybe like during the course of discussion, we can uh, try to... Uh, uh, you know, discuss those matters. But meanwhile, uh, thank you again, sir, and for giving such a valuable input. And in fact, laying down the entire activity plan, what we should know, uh, do, and how SEPC can also integrate. And I have the pleasure of inviting Mr. Subhas Goyal, who uh, uh, is the chairman of uh, the tourism and services sector in uh, FIO, and uh, where, like uh, has served the industry in various capacities. So over to Mr. Goyal. Uh, we look forward uh, to hearing. Yeah. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vez Barua. You have hit the uh, nail on the head. Uh, revival will come only after survival. You see, today, uh, you see, I, I mean, the Prime Minister has done an excellent job by safeguarding our health. But what I'm worried about is that more people will die of economic starvation then we'll die of food starvation. And we are still indulging in intellectual debates. It's like a man is drowning and mm -hmm. we are sitting either on a boat or on the shore and we are discussing, oh, should we throw a rope or should we throw a this or what should we do? Oh, in Germany they did this, in Japan they did this. I hope the government knows and the government knows what is needed. 
today uk is giving salaries uh, of hotels you see uh, uh, if you can't give 100% salaries give 50% salaries do something you see today the tourism ministry is sitting on 2500 crore rupee of budget what promotion are we going to do at least 1500 from that can can come to the bailout of the industry today small and medium operators they don't have money to pay the salaries of the staff they don't have money to pay the electricity bills they don't have money to do anything and we are still discussing and we are making a task force it is like the man is drowning and we are making a task force that if this man comes out of the water then we are going to do this to him are please first save him first save the industry we we only give lip service to the industry is the largest employment generator one out of every nine jobs are created in this industry mm. we are going to eradicate how are we going to eradicate poverty when the greatest job creators in the world are drowning as uh, ito said that 90% of the people are sme we are only talking you see just like justice delayed is justice denied if the government does not give a bailout package now it is impossible for us to survive i don't know what we are living uh, you see the prime minister has a vision but down the line nothing is happening i think there is so much red tape there is so much bureaucracy that i am sorry to say that till now the package should have come out today is already the next month has started by 7 we have to pay salaries how from where will the money come when every drop of resource is stopped when we do not know what is going to happen i think it is now or never if the the government does not wake up now if the government does not give a bill out of now i think it is going to be very difficult for the tourism industry to survive so unless and until we survive then only we can talk about revival plans then only we can talk about what we are going to do yes i agree that we will have to focus on domestic tourism we will have to focus on religious tourism we will have to focus on uh, health tourism medical tourism and you know health safety hotels will have to like security check they will have to do health checks and they will have to have sc uh, scanning uh, you know at the gates similarly even restaurants will have to do these scanners we will have to all wear will have to pay gloves they will have to have masks the world has changed the world is never going to be same again but for god's sake we need to start the economic activity we cannot we cannot you know we have we have to live with this virus you see just like you know we are living with tuberculosis we are living with so many other diseases uh, vaccine will come out the uh, serum in, uh, institute of india with oxford is coming out with a vaccine by september we hope it will be out but till that time the economy has to go on people have to eat now there is no point giving just food to people i think like uh, most of the restaurants are doing hotels are doing they are giving food to the people but this industry is telling people how to fish how to catch their own food how to make their own food so unless and until we start the economic activity fast nothing is going to happen yes we have to uh, maintain all the cautions it has to be uh, it has to people have to be fined that anyone coming out without the mask social distancing will have to be maintained but the wheels of it to start and whatever bailout package the government wants to do and there are certain things for which the government doesn't need money for example giving instructions to the bank to give a 10 year loan at 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 a 3% or 4% interest so that people you know and the interest can be uh, if they do not if tourism ministry does not want to give out a bailout package okay guarantee the loans in the banks there has to be a lot of things one year tax holiday this is something which the government can do easily then <coughs> give us the refunds those of who are, who have paid taxes <coughs> <coughs> our company has paid taxes for the last 46 years give us at least one year's tax back so that we have a cash flow to pay to our people we don't want to get rid of any of our staff but unfortunately if we do not get a bailout package what will we do where will we get the money from we can't print the money we have to get it out of either the government or 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 economic activity so neither the government is giving us a bailout package nor are we starting any economic activity the result is that we are drowning and then like uh, it happens once we drown then we can do an analysis that why 
why did the tourism industry drown why did so many people become bankrupt oh in future we are going to do like this you see i mean this is the tragedy of this country you know enough is enough every we have sent through faith to ito to tai to all the association to fhri hundreds of uh, you know representations to the prime minister to the finance minister to the through the tourism minister to the home, to everyone don't tell me they are not reading we are sending thousands and thousands of twitter messages right sos messages no one is responding i am sorry i am ashamed that i am in this country where the government is not bothered about the jobs they are not bothered about what is happening to this industry they are not bothered about the largest employment generators and we are only doing lip service we are only going to be doing an analysis after the people go bankrupt after people commit suicide this is a famine it's like a tourism famine like farmers famine you see uh, this is a drought this is a famine and <clears throat> will they wake up after tour operators and small travel agents started committing suicides i mean this is the tragedy of this country when will we wake up please i appeal to the services uh, council and also to all the other associations to faith that please i request with folded hands to the government please wake up see the writing on the wall we are drowning please save us thank you thank you mr goel in fact uh, you know very rightly mentioned like uh, first is survival and then revival and uh, we understand like uh, they constitute a task force and the activities like you know uh, government definitely realizes the significance of the industry in the whole economy of course like it may take time and uh, uh, there has to be a collective effort and we are definitely making an scbc is definitely going to play a very crucial role over here in terms of getting the right kind of incentives for the sector but uh, there are too many other aspects uh, involved in it like you know uh, so many other uh, uh, factors variables and that will actually define like how the banks can uh, uh, you know give the moratorium that is uh, definitely one idea they have given uh, like rbi was given the instruction or advice for 3 month to allow the banks i think something is moving in that direction but having said that like uh, the points are very well taken and definitely like uh, there has to be a collective uh, effort in this direction at uh, this particular webinar also like uh, looks forward to gather those points and take up the finer ones to the government to seek a, a support yeah. but can i can i just yes. intervene before you go ahead yes a uh, certain issues which are i totally understand mr goel's angst on this subhas ji's angst on this and he has been an absolute veteran of the industry Uh, for uh, i mean for decades and decades so he knows everything inside out well most of it could be very difficult for the government to uh, implement because it also has to look at its own revenues certain things which we recommended to the government through scpc and as a as a you know on a personal level also for example rbi has asked as uh, has said that there would be a moratorium but there is an interest on interest component even during this moratorium which defeats the entire purpose so if today you have a x amount of loan you will end up paying 3 months interest if you want a moratorium whereas a moratorium should be a flat moratorium that in this 3 months you don't pay any single amount and the banks are not the losers because your whatever your uh, equated monthly installments are whether you are a home owner or whether you are a business owner that continues so that is one aspect which we have told the uh, rbi and i believe people have also gone to the supreme court on this the second thing is that that the rbi has cut its repo rates uh, twice over now but the rbi has not even given instructions to the banks to uh, the, re reduce the rate uh, correspondingly to what the repo rate so that it means no sense and for the rbi to tell banks to give more money to industry whereas industry is not in a position to repay its entire its existing loans the you don't expect industry to take on more burden which is not going to be able to so that is one aspect the second thing is this that mr goel has said that we have asked the government to at least refund one year tax which we have paid my recommendation which i had made 
was that that the government give to people especially those whose businesses have not done well and who are owed their refunds whether it is income tax or whether it is gst refunds they they are owed that refund with the government has to pay to them either they pay them today or they'll have to pay them tomorrow and the government came out with only repayment of income tax refund up to 5 lakhs of rupees it does not serve any purpose so i can understand the mr goel's frustrations as we go ahead please continue thank you sir thank you and uh, now taking it forward i would like to invite uh, mr st borgia who is the chairman and managing director of indico laser hotels and is ex president of the eco tourism society of india so we look forward to hear him on the discussion yeah. thank you and uh, welcome uh, everybody uh when uh, the whole lockdown started i was very eager to see all announcements uh, being made by rbi the government frankly nothing has reached anywhere we don't know where it is and i am with mr goel about his uh, anxiety today it has come to a point understand it took 19 days for uk to put money in the pockets of employees it took 28 days for america why should india take such a long time when it is burning as is the goal said now i have given up on that uh, but the travel and tourism industry historically in india is used to this idea of reinventing and reinventing and reinventing today i would say the government has not contributed one penny from day one the last 50 years the industry has reinvented reinvented and survived and it has built the industry to world standards today it is crumbled but we will build it again we will build it again we have the indian blood in us and we have the tourism blood in us we are passionate people we will build but the anxiety that is happening down the field people have no food to eat there are two three kinds of hotel let's just not talk about hotel and travel all put together in the same basket there are hotels like mine we built hotels in remote uh, tribal areas in remote rural areas where we took electricity into the uh, villages now there we survived it is there at eh? there's scenery and their landscape that we were selling so we took the entire village people with us today we cannot say we will pay 25% salary 50% salary no our our responsibility is far more we got to feed the village right now about 600 700 people are eating in the hotel they come we just give them the material they cook they eat and they go they're not bad people they just want to survive how do they survive they have no work they have absolutely no work forget my staff the people in the village and i can't just take care of my people alone we got to take care of the people so three days ago look how nice they are three days ago they called me and said we have decided to eat only two meals a day we do not want three meals because you have to survive for a longer period they think the lockdown is going to be longer so this is what is happening in the field so it it, it is uh, to talk about revival is too early a team can talk a task force can talk but for us there today it is survival the sunt have been so bad on the free it's a fact that tourism last year was a big failure in india so we don't have results this you understand we were already on a minus scene the day in which we had to lock down the hotel and the way in which government pressurized us to lock down we all needed about a crore a crore and a half to lock down the hotel it was not just locking down the hotel now opening is going to be another issue i may not open some of my hotels uh, just because the governor government says open no i may reinvent my own style i may open one small part of my hotel open it at a very uh, rock bottom price today the the importance is to put money in the pockets of the employees and to give food to the local people and to make sure my employees are eating well and they are staying safe so we have taken to a lot of measures so the idea is to find a client base a guest base 
who would just give me sufficient money to pay my salaries of my staff. They would do what they have to do. Now, if I'm waiting for the government, if I waited for the government to give me money to pay salaries of my staff, it wouldn't have happened. Just because uh, even even the moratorium that has been announced is not uh, genuine in nature. I'm sorry to say that. As your chairman said, Mr. Dawood said, it is not genuine. I, I felt very bad about RBI at the banks that day. What moratorium have they announced? They're going to charge me interest on interest? Then why do I need that money? I have paid my interest this month. I have paid all my dues this month because I had money. Because if I don't pay, at least last month I had the money which I saved in the previous month. But next month I'm not going to have money with me until I sell something. So what's the point in giving moratoriums? It's not genuine. And that hurt me a lot. The government has not realized. The banks have not realized. So there is a there's lot lack of genuinity in, in these moratoriums. Now coming to uh, the revival, I have brought down my five-star rate to two-star. From 10,000, I brought it to 2,500, and I am promoting it among the youth the young people, once they start traveling, others may follow. And I'm giving it to them at such a low price. Uh, not, not that I'm doing too much good. I'm looking at the survival of the hotel. One, it's an opportunity for them. Two, it gives me the little money I need to pay salaries of my staff. Just that. And that just should be taken care. Of course, it's going to be expensive. The hotel that we closed or the business that we close is not going to be the business that we are going to open. It's going to be totally different. So there are new protocols coming in, hygiene standards, employee quality. The whole thing will change. Today it has to be, I, I remember, uh, I remember the travel agents in Delhi. All the bosses used to be sitting in their office and run their business. The hoteliers will be walking on the floors in the hotel to run their business. We will again be uh, owner-driven businesses to survive, and uh, we will be doing business totally differently. Everything is going to be different. You will be different. I will be different. Our products will be different. We will now probably sell the real India. Why are we selling Western India? We'll be selling the real India, and I'm looking forward for it. And my request to my uh, colleagues and my uh, business mates is that we should not wait too long for the government to come with a dole package. No. We need to, we, we are uh, inventors. From time immemorial, we had people walking into this country. The Mongols, the British, the French, the Dutch, the Chinese, everybody came in for something rare in this country. And it is still there. They've taken so much. It is still there. Let's reinvent ourselves and kick back and uh, do what we can do. Because if I think we are going to wait for the government, it doesn't look, it doesn't look very genuine. So we need to move and uh, keep the employees motivated. They will surely help you do whatever they can do at their best. And uh, we got to reinvent ourselves and reboot and move on. Not uh, look at revival plans, uh, consulting and this and that. I'm hearing the same thing, the same words for the last 40 days north, south, or east, west. We are doing, and we have great classes. Right now, there are three webinars going on. Right now, I had to refuse uh, the IHK webinar, even though I'm the vice president there. Uh, this is a new forum for me, so I said, I must represent myself here. So we have to look at different hotels. The best would be you take a decision, you have a revival plan, and you execute it, because it's totally different. I don't need to do what Oberoi is doing or what Keraton is doing. I got to look at totally different things. I, not only I told you, I got to take care of my own employees. I got to take the neighborhood also because that's my mission. Go to the village, start with what they know, do something with what they do, and give it to them. So we are fine with that. But uh, I think the, the, if the government is genuine, in putting uh, their hand there, they got to move faster than what it is today. If not, they will come to sing the requiem song. Uh, there's a small hill station in South India, a place called Salem. There are about 
32 hotels there, 17 branded hotels. Out of the 17 hotels, 12 were for sale That speaks. Now you will start hearing uh, arrests, you will start uh, seeing bank takeovers, you will start seeing suicide. I think we've got to open up before that and move forward. Uh, corona is here to stay for some time. Uh, I used to work for UN uh, in South Africa, so I know what is what these viruses can do. Right now, uh, there is a team to take care of the vaccine. There is a team to take care of administration. But I think as tourism professionals, we need to concentrate on what we are doing and see how to revive because, as uh, I don't know, Mr. Bej Barwa, Mr. Goel said, we will have uh, an economic corona. People will die of uh, starvation. We have seen glimpses of that, the way the outstation workers are surviving. Luckily, we are able to give them some food, but they have no shelter. They are running here and there. Uh, that's terrible. I, I really denounce that. But we need to look at an economic revival very parallelly with a lot of focus and a lot of genuinity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Borgia. And in fact, uh, we all have the same resonating voice uh, when we talk about crisis, which leads to emergence of new ideas and new thought processes. A very well point, a very good point you have mentioned that we need not wait for the government to come up with the entire plan. But whatever is coming through, uh, let's uh, reorient our thought process as you have uh, suggested a model where you are, you are going ahead with the reducing of the charges, total cost, and uh, making it available so that a kind of initial momentum is generated. New destinations, uh, which uh, Mr. Barua also mentioned, that we should also look forward to creation of such a new destination. And of course, health hygiene and other things. So definitely liquidity will remain an issue uh, as uh, our chairman has also uh, uh, mentioned about moratorium. It has been taken up like uh, this has been taken up with uh, government on this matter. Like we have uh, taken highlighted this concern, but moving forward, we have to actually exist with this kind of crisis at least for some time. Uh, we don't know when the end, uh, when, when it is going to be, you know, uh, completely corona-free world, which I don't, uh, 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 we don't actually share that view right now. We do have to survive with the corona as many other diseases in past have been there. So it will be a new normal given the fact that corona exists. Okay, so moving forward and we take your views in a positive way. Moving forward, I uh, we have the pleasure of uh, Mr. Pranav Sarkar, who is IATO, uh, representing IATO. President, and uh, we look forward to hear from you, sir. Mr. Pranav Sarkar. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Away. Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me. And, yes. Sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Dower, for give, having such a wonderful uh, webinar session with uh, SCPC, and our membership is all attending. I can, I'm sure I can see almost 300 people are attending at the moment. So it is a very, very important uh, uh, session. And uh, on behalf of the uh, tourism industry, I would say that SEPC is a key role player for our industry at the moment when we are suffering on cash crunch and liquidity because our business is stopped from the month of uh, March onward. And it is already two months and we have to pay the salaries and we are all small tour operators. So when you don't earn, how you can pay the salaries this is the biggest challenge we have. Under the circumstances, the SCIA scripts are playing a role as oxygen cylinder. Without the scripts at the moment, we will all sink. If we get some benefit of this SCIA scripts, it will roll, out, roll down for a few more months. And on this requested, we requested all the sources, including Commerce Minister and also to Niti Aayog, that our script should be enhanced from 7% to 10%, at least, which will take care of a few months of expenditure. Because at the moment, we are all going zero billing. We don't have anything to bring in in our pocket and to pay the salaries. 
because we are all small and few people all the, all of us are having uh, 7 to 10 people some are having 10 to 20 20 to 40 depending on the business they have and the small agents they cannot survive more than two to three months without any earning and how long does without salary the staff can go on so it is going to be a challenging task as you know tourism is the multi having the multiplier effect of uh, generating employment one tourist brings in employment opportunity seven direct and 14 indirect jobs to the country 1 million tourists can create 21 million jobs it is a huge industry and this industry is surviving for such a long time on their own shoulder it is the investment by the private sectors where government did not have to play a role more than the uh, uh, all the licenses and other things but financially if you look at all the private sector investment has I'm come to develop this reaction. tourism we have come out come up till date on a big big way if you look at the number of tourists arriving in india is increasing every year and the earning of foreign exchange which is a very important source of revenue for the government of india which is we are contributing at large if this industry is drowning i think there need to be some safeguard from the government that at least to begin with without giving any you know we are not asking give us something on cash basis if you look at SEIS benefit is very important for us that doesn't go out from government immediate pocket but they will lose but next year if you look at if no tourists this year 2020 the tourists are not coming then that means we are not going to ask you any any SEIS uh, scripts therefore you save on that at least if you give this year the some script will you will get some less revenue but next year you will recover this revenue easily because we will not have anything to ask for you from you so therefore it is very very important that at the time of uh, crisis we should have uh, some benefit out of it and government should consider for enhancing the percentage for the time being at least for this covid year and this will not only you know help the tourism industry but also it will save the layoff because when tourism is going to start 100% tourism is not going to come back immediately to india because it will become into a staggered manner if if it is starts it will start with social distancing if you look at because very importantly all the aircrafts without the valid vaccination certificate no country is going to give visas no airline will give you a seat whenever you travel it has to be one seat vacant in the middle of the uh, aircraft so that rate of the air tickets are going to go high when you come to the ground whenever you use a taxi or a cab there will be two person with the driver so restriction when a group comes if it is then buses will have not more than 10 to 12 people in a bus therefore it is going to escalate the cost of the package tours then how many of the people will travel to start with even if it is for domestic tourism this scenario will remain with the domestic tourism also that with social distancing check-in in the hotels will be automatic check-in because no human touch will be there so hotel have to invest again to have the human less check-in procedures all the rooms we have to they have to do sanitization before check-in and after check-in cost is going to increase i agree that hotels will come out with a lesser uh, prices but expenses are going to go up room service will increase because no food will be served in the restaurant so people have to wait outside the door and take the food and leave the belly give give back the uh, you know utensils later on breakfast will be served in the restaurants on a fixed time basis on a packed basis you carry your breakfast and eat in your room so whole travel scenario will change to to my mind we see that only the business people and corporate may start to begin with then the pleasure will come first is survival 
then only revival will start so tourism will start at last so therefore very important that tourism needs some oxygen from the government which cannot be delayed any further it is already two months now 40 days over now further lockdown is going on after lockdown other businesses may start but tourism is not going to start sir at this stage social distancing will be the main key issue for the safety and whosoever is traveling first he will have to safeguard his own first he will have to earn then the surplus money he will go spend on the tourism sector and on the other hand all the state governments also have to come forward to welcome the domestic tourism because they have to take care not only the sanitization of the monuments and the visiting areas of tourist areas and give a hygienic condition and they have to give the assurance that when you visit our state you will be safe and healthy so those things are the main key of the revivals first we have to be survive i appreciate all the speakers mr goel spoke very well and he highlighted the issues and mr bejwarwa has really said us that the national recovery plan for tourism economy is is very very important but sir whatever is happening it has to give a result first without the result any any you know plan out or any national recovery body will remain as a body but at the time we need the help then i also appreciate the moratorium of the uh, uh, banks if you look at interest is not reduced you rightly mentioned that means if i have to pay off within 36 month it will go up to 39 month so i am the loser on the other hand sir last month march gst we have to pay gst a deposit to the government and the law under the lockdown situation i get the information that if i delay on gst per month 9% interest will be charged by the government during lockdown why government is charging 9% interest why cannot be this uh, you know uh, 9% off from the government side so government doesn't want to give anything but on the other hand they expect that we should pay the entire uh, salaries on other issues like we have also mentioned uh, that tourism can create big help to the government if you look at each one of us in in the in the tourism trade so much employment we have created we have really eradicated the uh, uh, poverty by employing the people not only in the cities but also villages i as rightly mentioned by mr borgia it is it is the uh, it is the industry which can give employment every nook and corner of our country even a trekking tour can give job opportunity to the sherpas and the donkey walas in the mountains boat walas in kerala and other areas so so much of opportunities through the tourism therefore it is the better that the survival of this industry is very much important therefore with the folded hand i request uh, chairman saab mr davar that our proposal you should take it very very strongly that if they can help on that issue of 7 to 10% at least it will be a oxygen cylinder for us and after that whatever help government can extend we have requested for long term uh, bank loans 5 to 10 years interest free loans collateral free loans so that some uh, rescue comes in the hand of the small tour operators so those things we have taken up with various authorities we are waiting for their replies and a pressure can be built up from the government authorities that the tourism sector needs the help now or it will go down very early you thank you after the lockdown sir uh, the most of the people if they don't get any help you will see lot of layoff in the industry so we do not want that thank you very much sir thank you mr sarkar i very quickly want to interject on the sis issue 
first we have uh, taken it up with the dgft and with the ministry anyone who has uh, areas of uh, seis or not been paid for earlier years they can contact us they can contact the dg give the details we are following it up uh, strongly with dgft on that second is this that we are also coming out with a standard operating procedure for uh, the uh, realization of seis because there are quite a few issues at times where uh, you are asked to come and give documents and documents and you know there is a delay in uh, you getting the seis scripts so we have also uh, spoken to them you were also part of that meeting we have spoken to the commerce ministry and we will be giving a standard operating procedure shortly to the ministry for seis my only one request to the other speakers is uh, uh, to be a little to the point and uh, i don't think we have much time so abhay if you can say how much time each other speaker should uh, should yeah. have because we also require to have some time for question and answer question. thank you yeah. thank you sir in fact uh, like we will be having about 10 to 12 minutes for each speaker and uh, now taking it forward as uh, sir has already mentioned about the steps taken by stpc on sis and sops which we need to develop so we are very much in the process and very soon will be come out coming out and one more point like uh, the associations they can also collectively get a, a provide us the details of the acis spending acis although we have got the details from the members of acpc who are also in the tourism sector but maybe like some of them may not have sent to us so if that can be provided to us so that we can make a collective representation and uh, now we have the pleasure of mr ranjeev ranvijay rathor a uh, ceo of omed hotel here and uh, uh, a very good morning to you and good morning please. good morning everybody yeah. I, yeah. and i think most of the points which i was supposed to uh, uh, mention i think it has been addressed by our stalwart from our industry shubhash ji and pranav da i had uh, prepared some points on the revival part of uh, uh, our industry and i was i was hoping from uh, through this platform i could you know put up some points which could be helpful to revive and boost consumption and uh, consumption uh, and, and tourism and one of the points which i wanted to uh, you know uh, put it forward is to have a a longer weekend so like a two and a half day weekend uh, program which the government could recommend to private and uh, uh, and public sector where uh, they can have a, a four and a half week flexible working uh, system Uh, so that uh, people get uh, more time uh, so that they can travel probably during the week they can have a longer week uh, working hours and uh, have a four and a half day week uh, flexible working system uh, that is one of the things which i wanted to uh, uh, mention i wanted that if the government can come up with a, a fund which uh, could generate which could launch e vouchers which could uh, boost the cultural sector reopening uh, post covid lockdown the all vouchers can be distributed among uh, uh, people so that uh, you know they can buy discounted tickets tourism related leisure and entertainment industry this all to boost uh, domestic consumption after the economic effect effect of uh, covid virus and um, uh, we we must have a framework uh, so that uh, we can uh, we can recommend the government to provide a discount of up to 50000 per person on income tax subsidy so that uh, travel within the country uh, you know uh, can be more uh, so people can travel more uh, we like uh, the government uh, to have a create uh, to create a marketing uh, marketing partnership program to help tourism businesses to maintain their international presence and build demand for when the market re recovers so under the program government can support part of the marketing cost and award additional funding boosters to company that can collaborate with other tourism stakeholder to create value added experience and uh, uh, also work on uh, you know tourism uh, as, as a uh, the government should you know also work to create a st uh, story content fund 
to encourage and support local and international content creator to create uh, compelling uh, stories of strength uh, solidarity unite uh, unity in india and also for digital video content like these are some marketing uh, 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 points which i am uh, trying to suggest uh, through this medium so that but once uh, once the recovery recovery starts we have uh, framed up some points to the government so that uh, and the most important is we need to have our borders uh, borders all open and flights to resume because until flights internationally and domestically they don't resume recover doesn't recovery doesn't start so that is one of the aspect which i wanted to put forward uh, open borders Uh, uh you know uh, visas flex you know uh, red red tapeism in visa pr process and uh, uh relaxing visa rules introduce multiple entry tourism visas uh cutting visa processing time uh, uh visa holders who are unable to travel due to coronavirus related restriction should be able to reapply for new visa free of charge uh, uh we have to resume flights and uh, we have to also uh, boost uh, uh, we have to we have to have in, because if after post uh, covid once things recover the first person uh, international ca ca country which people are ready to travel is chinese now uh, we should have a strategic uh, plan how once things normalize because as per data what 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 i have seen is the the first Uh, uh citizens who are willing to travel if things open up within 2020 are chinese so uh, if we have a robust uh, marketing plan uh, to attract uh, my chinese which i i many people will not agree but this is like my uh, personal view uh, we should uh, have uh, uh, and that is what the revival looks like thank you yeah mr ranjit ji thank you and uh, we move to mr sashikant best who is uh, uh, a corporate director of ihcl so we look forward to hear him and then we'll take up the questions which are there yeah sure abey thank you abey abey i think we've heard everything that we had to hear on this topic from the uh, you know the mm -hmm. panelists who spoken before me very experienced panelists so uh, i agree with mr steve that uh, you know we'll have to innovate ourselves uh, in case we want to survive and i'm sure uh, if survival is at stake uh, every company will uh, have their own strategies innovation innovation reinvention strategies to you know stay afloat and to somehow get uh, business into their hotels or uh, the you know so uh, while all this is perfectly okay uh, i think but the issue would be how long can you survive uh, you know because this is going to be a long haul uh, this is not going to be over uh, within next two or three months I, i you know things are not going to be normal at least for 9 to 12 months so for for us uh, it's good to innovate and reinvent ourselves but we would still uh, all of us would require uh, some kind of subsidy incentive from the government because without the government subsidy or uh, incentive it will become very difficult for uh, very small operators to even survive in this atmosphere so uh, you know as as uh, as uh, part of uh, the hotel associations as being part of faith you know the various you know these organizations that we are part of we have already uh, knocked on the doors of the government and we are besides you know asking for moratorium on uh, payment of loans Uh, you know we have also asked that you know if the gst collected can be used as a working capital if uh, you know the uh, the uh, the electricity rates etc are not charged on load but they are charged on actuals uh, and there are very you know if the government can subsidize the uh, you know the salaries by 50% for the next 6 months 8 months depending uh, you know on the situ current situation uh these these are some of the things that we have already brought up in our uh, you know in our uh, letters to the uh, various uh, agencies in the government and uh, my 
colleagues have and my panelists, fellow panelists have already spoken about the SCIS. Yes, I agree that SCIS rates, uh, SCIS rate uh, incentive rate needs to be uh, you know taken up for the hotel industry. It's just five percent uh, uh, as of now, and uh, if it can be increased to uh, you know seven or ten percent, it really helps us because next year in uh, you know for the year 2020-21, I don't think. Any of us will be earning anything substantial to get, uh, you know, any incentive from the government. The incentive would be uh, a, a pittance, you know. So while we innovate and reinvent, I think we need to knock on the uh, doors of the government and ask them for a, uh, you know, a package which also helps us in, uh, you know, in surviving and taking the industry forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. In fact, uh, like uh, uh, you have uh, actually like mentioned about this and ACIS. On ACIS, we have actually taken a step, but uh, as uh, our chairman has uh, mentioned, that we have requested them to continue ACIS, but uh, enhancement is an issue. Okay, uh, although like industry is passing through difficult time and GST refund, that is also the point mentioned. Like uh, whatever is the pending that can be. Uh, uh, immediately given back to the industry to help them have a liquidity issue sorted out. And uh, uh, like uh, so far, like we had discussed on various aspects, how to revive, what are the and the time duration it will take, as we all can uh, gather the view that it will be quite long till the thing stabilizes. But somewhere we have to start uh, the uh, kind of the process for reviving and that can be like the various means. Uh, definitely keeping in view the health hygiene, the safety measures, and there definitely it's a double whammy. The cost is going up when you have more of a screening, more of automation at the check-in counters and till the aviation also doesn't play an active role like till the lockdown, <coughs> you will not have the influx of the uh, you know, tourists from one place to the another. Uh, while uh, talking to you, I was uh, while listening to all of you, like a lot of questions have come forward, but mainly like it has uh, surprisingly, it's only talking about the government support. And uh, as uh, uh, echoed by all the panelists here, that we are definitely looking forward to the government to handle and to provide the support. So on this only, like there's no particular specific question. It's all only on the ACIS and in what way government can come up with certain package so I would take this opportunity. So on behalf of the participants, maybe like I would request Mr. Beige Barua to reflect on that, that in what way government can uh, take a holistic view, keeping in view the constraint and the uh, uh, like uh, key concerns of the industry and constraints on the part of the government. What best uh, 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 one could expect besides the continuity of SEIS and all things. Okay. So, uh, hello. Yes, yes, sir. We can hear you, but we can't. Can you see me also? No. no we can hear you, sir. Yes. I think there is some problem here. Yes. I, uh, well, uh, I was listening to all the discussion as uh, Steve was talking about. Is that we uh, need not depend too much on the government, but then government support certainly will be most essential. Uh, but then, uh, what we have to do is that we have to think of different problems for different sectors of the tourism. Now, some of them would have, yeah, some of the sectors would, uh, every sector, you know, there are small sectors, there are bigger sectors, bigger hotels, smaller hotels, mini hotels, their, their problems will be different. Many of them will certainly need a lot of support at this moment. Certainly not dependence, but support, yes, and government will need. And, uh, uh, I, I believe that uh, what is needed immediately is that for survival is a question that has been brought out by everyone uh, without going into you know, procedural formalities of a task force report, etc. Even in an ad hoc manner, a government can have a discussion with the industry leaders and quickly say that these are the things we will do and a uh, few things like, you know, problems of taxation, etc., moratorium of interest, credit guarantee, 
liquidity. These are things which can be done. And if it is a, there is a will, it can be done. And these appear to be most important for the industry. So I, 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 I hope the industry can have a one-to-one -one discussion with the government and see that uh, some of these key immediate problems are sorted out and leave the other problems of revival for the time being. Uh, survival first and then take over the revival things and for the revival and the long term perhaps certainly it will be a new norm and then we'll have to have uh, keep alive the demand if to induce demand how to do that would be things we'll have to keep on thinking as we go along but at this moment i think let us concentrate on some of the problems which will be crucial for the survival of the most of the industry thank you sir in fact, uh, like uh, we do share that view, sir. Like uh, we need to have uh, uh, key critical areas. You know, if the demand list can't be too long. We have to prioritize on certain areas. Like SCIS definitely comes as a priority from uh, everyone whom we heard from the industry. We are getting that echo, and uh, how to uh, get hold of the liquidity uh, liquidity scenario through tax refund or something. So maybe as a takeaway, we can think of four or five. Uh, uh, points which can be addressed to the government for the support and definitely like uh, the industry players have to come up with their own marketing models and business model to take it further that's what uh, like uh, we share i would request if chairman can uh, uh, yes uh, you know i'd like to come in here yes, yes sir. Uh, very quickly i hope i'm proved absolutely wrong on this but i don't think the government is going to come out with anything sector specific for at least some time because what they would do is largely give uh, general relief, which would then apply to almost all industry, and it would be related to size of the business in terms of so more focus on the medium and small uh, enterprises, micro enterprises, rather than the larger organizations, which the government feels can take care of themselves, which I don't necessarily agree with. So that is just my uh, view on this, but that is the response which, you know, that's the feeling one gets when we are talking to a lot of people on this. As far as FCIS is concerned, once again, we will move very fast on this issue. My request is this, that there are a lot of organizations within the sector. I would request that uh, uh, the organizations speak to their membership. They uh, get them to be part of ACPC. I'm sure some of them are not part of us. They're part of FIO, right? But uh, SCPC is uh, specifically focused on services, only focused on services. And like other organizations, we are, you know, services are not one small section and in that tourism is not another small section. So to, and also there is strength in numbers. So the more membership that we have, uh, today, the membership that we have in SEPC, the total volume of uh, exports which the membership does is close to $45 billion uh, in the year 2018. Now, we need to build that up because the total uh, uh, you know, business is close to $128 billion in all services. And travel and tourism, of course, is one part of it. We do have the figures. But I would request uh, all those who are uh, representing organizations, including uh, Mr. Sarkar and certainly Mr. Goel, to prevail upon these organizations and their membership to become a part of uh, SEPC. And uh, uh, yes, on SEIS, we will, uh, we will move. Uh, you are aware that the Commerce Minister himself had made statements that they wanted to do away with SEIS. And we had strongly opposed that even before the uh, lockdown. We will, going forward, come out with another scheme with something else we will uh, sort of uh, put together. Uh, because, you know, MEIS also is being uh, uh, taken out of contention because of WTO uh, regulations and RODTEP is coming in. So the same way, uh, we will also do something for the services sector. But... Uh, I once again thank all the participants uh, in this webinar. We will be uh, putting out a report on this. Uh, Abhay, let us do it at the earliest. Sure. And we shall convey this report to the Commerce Ministry of the uh, webinar, 
whatever the recommendations have been made. And uh, once again, on my behalf, thanks to all the participants and all the uh, persons who have uh, logged in for the webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Mr. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. I want to assure you that uh, the work that the Services Export Promotion Council has done for SIS is really increased the goodwill. And not only my company, but I'm sure a lot of other companies would join, uh, you know, uh, uh, the Services Export Promotion Council. I just got a call from the Vice President of IATO that a lot of members who already have limits in the bank you know, uh, uh, from Mr. Rajiv Mehra, that those who have limits in the bank, the banks are reducing those limits, even if those limits are against properties. Now, this is something very serious, that instead of increasing the limits in the tourism <laughs> sector, you see, the banks have already been given instructions by the government to reduce the limits. Now, they are trying to kill the geese that lays golden eggs. How, how is this, how are we going to survive? I mean, we are, if, if, the, if the government does not want to shell out money, at least through banking channels and through institutions, they can help us by giving us soft loans. What are, we are not, we are asking for our rightful dues. Even a country like Pakistan, which is a bankrupt country, is giving tourism industry loans at 4%, 5%. Why can't we do it? What is the problem? Why are we sleeping? I think this needs to be taken up in a very, I'm sorry, I'm agitated, which normally I'm not, but I'm amazed at the way, uh, you know, our leadership is behaving. It's unbelievable. Subhati, Subhati, I've also heard that the banks are not just the tourism yes. industry, but everywhere. But I think they are doing it on a case to case basis, uh, keeping in mind the, uh, you know, the record of the, this thing. I agree with you that uh, this is not the right time to do something this like this. War. This is and a war, a, war going on. It's an absolute on. war. And I'm, I'm, I'm and telling war, you one thing. Have have I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm telling you one thing that, you know, uh, uh, I am also greatly anguished. I am also disillusioned that while the, and I have expressed this, uh, we have, uh, you know, regular interaction with the Commerce Ministry. Uh, and I have, uh, and with the Commerce Minister and the Commerce Secretary, and I have all the time I have said this, that please lift the lockdown, you will have starvation, you will have a worse case than uh, the what the threat from COVID is. Please support industry, please talk to RBI, uh, reduce the interest burden. If you have already reduced RBI, has reduced repo rates, there is no reason why banks cannot reduce their rates by about 2%. Uh, Please see that there is no interest on interest. It does not make any sense that I have to pay interest for three months. If I have a loan of say five crores of rupees with the banks, I have to pay about 12 lakhs of rupees, 13 lakhs of rupees of interest over three months. But I don't have money to pay. You should give us a you should give us a flat moratorium and let us let alone businesses. What about individuals? What about people who have uh, uh, home loans? Right. They, I mean, they, I, we know the situation and there are so many businesses today which will not be able to pay the staff. No matter what government will come out with, no matter what you will come out with under disaster management, uh, the rules are not. But if there is no money with the person, with the business, there is no money to pay. You can do whatever you want to. You can put the business owner behind bars. You can file FIR. But what are you going to do? Just coming out with a regulation saying that, uh, or with a rule saying that uh, you cannot uh, reduce staff and you have to pay everybody their salary, and with the banks not cooperating, where are you going to do that from? And people have already, people have, regardless of the government's this thing, if the business has to survive in the long term, you need to conserve your money just now. You need to conserve your funds. You need to conserve your finances. I totally share with you, Subhadi, and you know, I've known you for a long time, but I, I can see that your anger at having been in this industry for so long, given so much of your time, energy, effort, blood, sweat, and tears to this uh, industry. And I can see that you feel for it. And I can, I can just 
I can just see that I can and my and all our sympathies, all our sympathies, as Mr. Bordia also said, are with the workers, are with their families. You know, Richard restaurant Dawar, I have, businesses. I Richard think, Dawar, uh, I have, I have one small uh, observation to give you. Let the tourism budget, the culture ministry and tourism ministry budget, be put to help the small travel agents and hotels survive. After three years, let them take more from us. We don't mind paying it back in terms of interest or whatever they want to. Let them take it back after three years. We have stood by the country. We have helped the country develop. We have improved the per capita of remote areas. So that's how only we can. Can I have one word? Please, no, yeah. yeah. No, I was just going to say that, yes, there are small problems like liquidity and increasing the limit, etc. It is very difficult for the industry association separately to be fighting the government because government is a big hole. And there, I suppose mm -hmm. that what we should try to do is that the Ministry of Tourism should be the mouthpiece of the industry as a whole on all these issues. So let us say that uh, the industry should uh, clearly establish some contact with the Ministry of Tourism, which should take up all these issues with the concern of the ministries because uh, uh, they are very genuine concerns and they, it is the responsibility of Ministry of Tourism, uh, which we used to do earlier as uh, Subhash will realize that we are working together in many areas uh, yes. So I think the ministry should be the mouthpiece for some of those problems. Sir, the ministry yeah. is doing its best. <laughs> the ministry is doing its best. But the finance ministry and the PMO is not listening to the tourism ministry. The tourism ministry, I'm sorry, uh, uh, I, I have all hats off to the cooperation that we are getting from the tourism ministry and the tourism minister and the tourism secretary and DG tourism is unbelievable. Even they are helping us round the clock. But the decision is with the PMO. The decision is with the finance ministry. The decision is with the commerce ministry. Now, little relief, only relief we have got is SIS. Rest, neither for interest, nor for banking, nor for loans, nor for any other thing, nor for income tax. We've got any relief. So, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I have been a great supporter of the Modi government, but I'm sorry to say, that I never expected because this government has reacted when it comes to crisis, whether it was war with Pakistan or anything, hats off to this government. But now we are also at war. We are war with, we are in an undeclared war where we can't see the enemy. So please, I, with folded hands, I pray to my government, I request the Modi government to please wake up and please help the people who are helping the poorest of the poor, as rightly said by Parnab Sarkar. In the remotest areas, whether it is a pony driver, whether it is a rickshaw puller, whether who every nook and corner, the poorest of the poor is being helped by the tour operators and the uh, tourism industry. So please, if you don't help us now, you will never be able to help us. Sir, this is a war against the country. It's a war against the economy. And this is the time when the government and the industry needs to work together. Mr. Dawar, you are being heard in the government. We appeal to you use the official and the personal resources to please uh, help us to help the country. We are not, not helping. Subarji. We don't Subarji, want I, money for us. We I want to help Subarji. for our staff. For our, Subarji, for, please. Sorry. Right, sir. Subhaji, no, yeah. I understand. I only want to interject here that you are right that the, the dispensers are the finance ministry and the prime minister's office. It is not the uh, commerce ministry. I can assure you that the meeting that we've been having with the Commerce Minister and the Ministry and the DGFT, we have had a series of meetings with the Minister himself personally attending. And there, there are huge issues which other uh, export promotion councils have because they are all in the manufacturing sector. And wherever it is possible, and wherever it is possible, even in terms of coordination with other ministries, I can tell you that in the course of our meeting, even before our meeting is over, wherever there is a resolution, people are already on the phone, phone lines, and they are they are getting even at small things like GNPT and whatever that needs to be done and movement of goods. And but the thing is this that you know the government also I don't think has the resources at this stage. So yes, but we will take up the cause. 
uh, as far as possible with us, both in terms of our uh, official capacity as uh, SEPC and also whatever is possible in my personal capacity. But uh, if there are no other comments, maybe now... Uh, uh, I have one point, uh, Avaiji, sure. if you can give me half a minute, Mr. Avaiji. Sure. Okay. Uh, I would like to thank Mr. Dabur for inviting the associations and uh, we assure you on behalf of IITU that uh, we will sensitize all our membership. If anything pending, they should follow it up and they should also be part of uh, your member as soon as possible if they are not. And I also assure Mr. Aveji and uh, Mr. Dawal that uh, uh, for any rules and regulation for setting up any new uh, suggestions where it can be processed faster way or whatever SOP you are going to set up, those things we are ready to help and anytime we are open to discussion. For this, I thank you very much and we are always available 24-7. And uh, finally, I would like to thank Mr. Bejburwa to taking up the issue that uh, to Ministry of Tourism, the spokesperson, we, I, we de definitely agree with you. And we are always with Ministry of Tourism day and night. And this is the coordination we are going on. And they are helping uh, not only IATO, but as faith also, they are helping us all the time. And they have never said no. And we are hopeful that something to come up very soon. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Sir. Thank you, everyone. And thank you.